What's going on you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Yet again, I am here at Fix Body Group with my doctor, Dr. Wag, and he's gonna be here to help me talk through another tips with Tish. This one is also going to be an injury prevention and we're gonna talk all about the knee. And so for those of you who follow Tiger, you know that he has been struggling with a knee injury and I'm sure some of you have been struggling with a knee injury as well. I think Brooks Kepka has also struggled with a knee injury and we're going to eliminate that move and we're also gonna talk through some stretches and or workouts that can help you get through that knee injury. So let's get to it. All right, you guys, so we're gonna do our very best to take away that knee pain and also take away the move that's causing it. Now, these are the two things that I see most common in golfers that cause this knee pain. If you're right-handed, it'll most likely be in your left knee. So let's get started getting set up. I have a 60 degree in hand right here. So firstly, I talk about this all the time, making sure that your grip, stance, and alignment and posture is in line and that affects every part and every future injury that you could potentially have. Now, one thing I don't think that's talked about enough in your setup is that when you are set up, at no point do you really want to have a hard flex in your swing. And as hard as that is, you really do need to feel like jello. And so when you're getting set up, you're standing over the ball just like so. I think it's very common for golfers to actually flex their knees, especially that left knee at start. And for those who are familiar with that stack and tilt method, they actually tell you to hold strong to your left side, which I'm telling you right now, you should not do at all. So as I'm getting set up, I feel just nice and relaxed. I feel like I'm in an athletic stance, but I'm a ready stance, just like when you're in tennis, you're always ready. So you're, you're comfortable, but you're not at a constant flex. So that's the first thing you want to eliminate. No lock in your knee. Okay. And going off this point, when you get to the top, when you're right here, making sure that you're allowing that knee to just react to your upper body turning. To me, the golf swing is a lot of an upper body movement and your lower body is reacting. So that goes into it. And now we're gonna go into the impact and the torque of your golf swing, which I think is where a lot of knee injuries happen. You see a lot of golfers, they get really loaded. Now you have so much power going into the ground from the top of your swing. Now as you come down, when for those who have a lot of head movement, which you want to eliminate, you want to be more of like a head on a swivel versus this up and down movement when you're trying to get the ball that way. When you're here and you're already becoming lower to the ground, now you have nowhere to go but up. And when you're trying to swing as hard as you can, it creates this up and twisting motion of your knee, which is where a lot of the injury happens. And if you guys ever watch Bryson DeChambeau swing, I can't swing as hard as him, but he swings so hard that he has to intentionally open up his foot and turn it at finish. So when you look at his driver swing, especially his foot's already open. And because he has so much torque and so much power in his swing, you'll see his heel turn even more because if he kept it there, it would literally keep on tearing that knee. So we want to eliminate that head movement so that you don't have too much of this upward movement and turn at the same time and you want to eliminate that jerking movement so for any of you guys who are going through pain we're going to talk through stretches right here and i'm going to bring in dr wag so we're going to go over three stretches to actually create more mobility so go ahead and set up that swing again so as tish goes through this first part of the swing go ahead and bring that all the way back when this knee's driving forward she needs to have slack in these muscles, meaning she has to have mobility. They need to be able to stretch or else her knee can't go forward. So the first stretch we go through is gonna stretch our quad, create a little space in the knee. We're also gonna go through one to create some space or slack in the hamstring because that can limit it as well. So the other stretch we're gonna do is to release this muscle right at the top of the hip. It goes directly into your IT band. So if this muscle's locked up, it's gonna create a lot of tension. That IT band goes directly into the kneecap. So if you've been having issues with your kneecap or you're feeling a lot of pain on the outside of the knee, these ones are gonna be for you. Perfect. All right. All right, the first stretch that we're doing is pretty multi-purpose. So this is gonna help us create a big stretch in our quads. It's also gonna help create some mobility in your ankles and in your feet. So to start the stretch, I'm on my knees. I have my toes on the ground. So trying to have all my toes on the ground, you're gonna go ahead and go back so you're just sitting on top of your feet. This might feel really uncomfortable if you have injuries in your toes, especially in that big toe and that first joint. So this is a good way to treat that, although it's uncomfortable, but sitting in here is kind of a way to open it up. So if you're not feeling pain in your feet, anything like that, 
If the knee pain is limiting you, so maybe you only go back this far, what I want you to do is take your hand, you're gonna put it behind your knee so your thumb is on the outside, and then sit back again. So having the hand there is gonna create a little bit of space, okay? So that's the start of uh, being on the feet. You're then gonna drop the feet flat. The same thing, I can keep my hands here if I need to, and then sit all the way back. So just like any of our stretches, we wanna be in the, in the position for about 20 seconds. That's the minimum. So I'm gonna have Tish set this up and we'll see her go through the exercise. Okay. So we'll try with the toes on the yep. Toes on, on the mat. mat to start. And then does it matter how far you're... So just about shoulder width. Okay. You're perfect for that setup there. So we down. try without the hands first. So okay. have her sit back. How does that feel? So far, so good. I think it's more, right now, it's more of a stretch in like... The foot? The, the feet yeah. than, than the quads at this moment. So not so much pain in the knee. No. Some pressure in the foot. Yeah, yes, correct. So for most people, it's gonna be normal in the beginning to mm -hmm. feel some discomfort in the foot until you kind of get used to this. Mm -hmm. Think about it, most of us have our feet in shoes most of the time, mm -hmm. so they're used to being at kind of a set length. Mm -hmm. When we're really taking the toes back, it's a pretty strong stretch. So give yourself a little bit of time to kind of get used to this one. Okay. Um, if this was bothering Tish's knees and we wanted to make that easier, we're gonna take that hand, this goes on the outside like this, so your thumb's touching the outside of the knee, okay. and then you go right back into the position. So when we do that, we put the hand there, it just creates a little bit more space. So you feel a little stronger stretch through here, mm -hmm. but it's gonna alleviate any discomfort on the knees. So if Tish feels good with that one, we've been on the feet for about 20 seconds, mm -hmm. now she's just gonna flatten the foot out. Keep my hands where it is? You can keep them there, yep. Okay. Yeah, this one I feel a real stretch, more yeah. towards the knees and the quads. So, if we don't feel knee pain with that, let's try it without the hands there as well. And you just lean back. Yep. Okay. And it's not so much the lean, but just seated. Mm -hmm. So try to drop your weight straight down. Okay. Yeah, definitely feel it. It looks so simple. Yeah. But it's actually like, you can literally just be doing anything and just try and sit like this. So this is like great this. for your knees, mm -hmm. but it's also, it's how these joints communicate together. So not a ton, but we're creating a little stretch in your hip, mm -hmm. definitely a stretch in the knee, and then you're stretching out the front of that ankle. So all three of those joints, really important to the golf swing. They all three have to communicate together. They have to be coordinated if you want to establish a really good swing. And the first thing for that is just stretching it out and making sure we have the mobility so that as you train, as you practice, you can really sink in coordinating that together. Awesome. Um, the next stretch we're gonna do is for a small muscle that's right here on the front of the hip. So it goes from the front of the hip to the top of the leg. So it's kind of shaped like a pocket if Tish had jeans on. That muscle, it's called your tensor fascial lata or TFL. This stretch is gonna be a floor TFL release. I'm using this uh, little vibration ball. This is from Hyper Ice. That's not necessary to release that, but this actually does a little bit of vibration. You can use a tennis ball or a golf ball. It's perfect to release this. You want to start with something softer. So if you have a lot of knee pain on the outside, or this area is really, really tight, start with a softer ball and kind of work your way up to something like a golf ball. All right? So I'm going to kind of talk you through this and then we'll have a Tish demo as well. But you won't be able to see a ton of it because what's going to be going on is kind of underneath. So. When we're landmarking, where do we put the ball? If you find the top of your hip, that bony part, and you go down just about an inch and over about an inch. That's where we want to be putting this, okay? So I'm going to put this down on the mat. I have the ball in the front of the hip. I'm in what we call a Spider-Man position. So I have my leg up, my other arm is here. My bottom leg, my toes are going straight towards the floor. So now I'm going to let my whole leg drop out so my weight is towards my pinky toe, and now I'm gonna roll my whole leg so it goes up top again. So drop the leg out, drop the leg in. If that is a ton of pressure or pain, it's okay to just get into this position and just kind of let your body relax into the weight of that ball for 20 seconds. Yeah. And start to introduce the motion as it gets easier. Right. Okay? Yeah. So. Switch. Okay, so it seems like such a such minimal movement, but one of those things that like I could be frozen because it also seems really painful at the same time. So yes. I'll actually work 
I'll go this way, I'll go on this. So this is actually, the, I mean, actually both hips are injured. It's a real long story. <laughs> but we are on the up, finally. But the left hip is really where I feel the most pain, so I do have to stretch it often. So I think this is going to be a great addition. Yeah, okay. and like you said, it's, it's a minimal motion. Yeah. But like we were saying on the other stretch, with all of these coordinated together, you have to maximize motion at each area. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this muscle is not huge. Um, it's not even super, super strong. Mm -hmm. But when this locks down, it creates more pull, tension on the knee. It create, limits how much mobility you can create. Mm -hmm. And all of that feeds into your swing and how you feel. Okay, all right. So I'm not sure if I want to get this right in the first go. So from the hip bone, we're gonna go down an inch, over an inch, yep. right? Perfect. Okay, I don't want to turn it on. I think I'm not gonna be able to handle <laughs> it. Okay, so down an inch, over an inch. Okay, Good. I'm so there. Should... Perfect. She has her other leg up, good, and then perfect. And now she has the bottom leg, she's up on her toes here. She's gonna think about taking that whole leg mm -hmm. and kind of dropping it out. So letting the leg rotate in, and now she's gonna bring it back. Rotate out, how's that feel? It's such a little movement. <laughs> but I will let you know that if my veins are popping out of my head right now, which I think they are, because this is what happens when I'm in pain, it's painful, but it's a good kind of pain. So she's just gently gonna rock this leg in and out. So that muscle is shortening and lengthening over this pressure. As it's shortening and lengthening over the pressure, that's helping those fibers realign back to that normal fiber orientation. Also with that pressure, we're limiting some of the blood flow as she kind of adds pressure and takes it away. So this is helping pump new blood into this area, increasing the healing. So a lot of good positive benefits from her doing a pretty easy motion. So fit this into your routine. If it's towards the end of the day and you're watching a TV show, you're you know on the floor playing with your kids, whatever it is, throw that ball underneath there, get a couple reps in on each side and really feel a lot more mobility through your hips. Mercy. I, <laughs> I couldn't even imagine doing this with a golf ball. But do I have another side? Huh? <sighs> you might as well. Yeah, turn it on right now. Turn it on? <laughs> yeah, try it. <laughs> okay, down and over. Spider-Man. Can't even move it! The vibration <laughs> makes it so much harder! discomfort. <laughs> there you go. Cool. All right, the last stretch that we're gonna do is for our hamstring. So again, this is a stretch that's pretty multi-beneficial as well. I'm gonna start from a seated position here. This is more like your traditional um, hurdler stretch for the hamstring. I have my right leg kind of tucked in. So just by getting my knee down to the ground, that's really opening up the hip here, and it's gonna change how we stretch the low back. So with my right and my left hand, I'm gonna reach straight out towards my leg, getting that big stretch on the hamstring. I'm gonna slowly try to pull myself down as far as I can, but I'm gonna hang out in this position for about 20 seconds. This is a great way to um, isolate the hamstring, but it's a great stretch for the low back as well. Of course, we're gonna switch sides, and then you can end by doing both if you want to get a stronger stretch in just the low back. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have Tish demo this and make sure uh, we're all set up for it. Okay. All right. So this is definitely a more common stretch. Yeah, like totally. A, a more known stretch. Most people have probably done this one before. <laughs> Nothing crazy going on here. So what we're going to look for is um, with Tish, just like myself and most people, when you set it up, that right hand is going to be a little bit trickier to touch compared to the left. So when you switch sides, notice if you have a big discrepancy there, because that'll tell you if you need to stretch more of the low back on that side. It's almost a little easier there, right? I think it's easier on this side for me, yeah. And so I can make this knee touch the floor. If we want easier. to kind of even that out, and maybe Tish notices this consistently, mm -hmm. so for her and myself, that right side was a little harder. Instead of now reaching straight through this way, we can square up our shoulders mm -hmm. and open more of a big arch like this, similar to that standing adductor stretch that we've done. Right. 
and that's going to open up more of the low back here. So if your issue is that when you go to reach for the toes, you're really limited on the outside hand, mm -hmm. this is how you can modify it to stretch that more and make it easier to reach. Got it. And that one, of course, should feel much easier yeah. after we do both individually. I used to not be able to touch my toes, so this is like really impressive. I don't know the last time I've actually done this stretch, so pretty good. Come a long way. <laughs> Come a long way, you guys. 27 and I can touch my toes. <laughs> All right, you guys, we went through three really awesome stretches, but I guess I have a question for you, Dr. Wag. Now, I think for those who may be going through an aching pain, that those stretches are really yeah. beneficial there, but what about those who may be having a more shooting nerve kind of knee pain? What's the next best step? So if you're dealing with more of a nervy pain, and if you're unsure what that is, just like you said, a sharp pain, stabbing, you know, what would feel like if you touch a thorn, that quick shooting pain, um, that, of course, there's a lot of different things that could cause that. Number one, if all of a sudden in your swing and you feel that it's really intense, probably stop playing. Yes, please do. <laughs> um, the rule, we always say, if you see something outside of your body that should be inside of your body, <laughs> see someone aside from yourself. Noted. So, okay. <laughs> that's kind of a, a given. But, if you all of a sudden, you know, Tish tees off and she feels really mm -hmm. sharp, nervy pain she in that area, we're probably not gonna push it, not play anymore. Outside of that, right? Mm -hmm. Say she tees off, she feels it, and then it's kind of instantly you know it's dissipating, but you don't like the feeling. Mm -hmm. um, starting with some cold, doing ice is okay mm -hmm. as far as reducing pain. So we typically tell patients, reducing the pain part, so if you can't withstand the pain, ice is good. But if the pain isn't that bad and we want to heal as fast as possible, heat is better. Because okay. heat is going to bring more heating material, more he more healing mm -hmm. uh, materials to the area. That's why when we get injured, our body swells. It's really intelligent. It's bringing more blood, more of the building products for the repair to that area. So, so heat and ice. So to kind of bring that all back. Yes. <laughs> uh, to make that easier, if it's we're going in levels here. Mm -hmm. If you can see something outside of your body, go talk to someone. Don't be watching <laughs> this video. If it's a strong pain that's sharp and it's really not going away, mm -hmm. probably not going to continue playing. And then I would just go with ice. Okay. We don't need to aggravate it more. And when I say aggravate, when we introduce the heat, that increases your nerve conduction. So you're going to feel more pain faster. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to like agitate it that way. I would just start with cold. Everything else below that, which I think is most of the injuries that we're talking about, so maybe you felt a little bit of a sharp pain when you're walking with one of your shots, or just kind of intermittently during like your last golf round. Mm -hmm. This is what we can do. Start with ice, just to numb it a little bit. Alternating hot and cold is one of the best treatments for any extremity type of injuries. Mm -hmm. So if you hurt your hand, your foot, ankle, elbow, wrist, wrist shoulder, <laughs> uh, all of these are really good. The reason for that is when we go cold, that slows down our blood flow. And then when you switch to hot, that's a huge influx of blood. Mm -hmm. So it's like slowing everything way down and then we get this big influx. So you're bringing all these building materials to the area. It also flushes out any of the damage. Okay. So I guess long-winded answer here. Your easy takeaway though for any of those joint injuries mm -hmm. is that contrast hot and cold. Got it. So doing a minute of each, if I were to treat, you know, let's say your elbow, minute of hot, right to a minute of cold. Minute of hot, minute of cold. Here's alternating back and forth for about 10 cycles. Awesome, great to know. All right, you guys, so to round out this video all on knee injury and more, we've gone through the stretches and the workouts. Now I wanna give you guys a tip to help eliminate that movement that's causing that knee pain to begin with. So we already know that you wanna stay relaxed in your setup and you don't wanna lock that knee to start, but now we're gonna work on that squatting motion that you may have that may be actually too much squatting motion. So this is a partner drill you could do. I have Dr. Wag assisting me in this. You wanna grab a shaft or another club. And what he's gonna do, really simple, you've probably already seen this, a lot of guys do it on tour on the range. He's gonna hold my head at setup. So I'm gonna get set up right here and he's gonna just place it on my head and what he's gonna do is make sure that the club never moves. So it's just a way for him to have a reference and for myself to have a reference to not move that head up and down. So I'm gonna go through a whole motion and you don't have to worry, you won't hit your partner. So making a swing right here. How'd I do? Doing all right? Okay, so as you can see here, when I'm taking it back, I still have a squatting motion. There is still a bend in my left knee. 
And so I can still bring that torque into the ball. You don't need to do this crazy lower motion here so that you can eliminate that, that squat, lift, and turn that's gonna hurt your knee, especially when you're wearing spikes and you're nailed into the ground and you have that motion, you are bound to hurt your knee. So I'm gonna go more at a, at a normal pace right here. So back and through, just like that. Guys, we have went through the entire video. Dr. Wag, thank you so much for taking the time to join me here. I hope that's helped some of you. Now, Dr. Wag, where can we find you? You can find me in Rancho Bernardo, in Mission Valley, or if you happen to be in Arizona, you can find us in Scottsdale, as well as on social media, find us as Fix Body Group. Yep, you want to be sure to follow them. They put out a lot of fun videos and they really encompass everything, so you don't want to miss that. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you like what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notifications button so you don't, don't miss, miss a beat. beat. Bye for now.